Hi, wrestling fans, and welcome to another edition. I'm John Arezzi. wrestling fans and welcome to pro wrestling spotlight rewind the only wrestling podcast that brings you back to the early days of inside pro wrestling talk covering the history of our groundbreaking radio show which aired from 1989 to 1995 each week this program reviews a different show from that era giving you a look back at all the breaking news stories with the guests that made the news and what was the beginning of an era where talking about the inside of the wrestling business became part of the wrestling business. On this episode, we are going to review show number five of the Pro Wrestling Spotlight, which aired originally on 1440 WNYG in Babylon, New York. Uh, This aired on May the 7th, 1989. It's a really jam-packed show with lots of firsts guests and the debut of some legendary callers. Uh, So get ready for a great show today. Uh, But first, I want to tell you that you can support this show by going to our Patreon account. Uh, For those of you who are already members, uh, the original broadcast of show number five, show number four, three, two, one, they're all up there. And as I did in the past, uh, the original broadcast will be released before We put this show out on Patreon so you get a chance to listen to it before you listen to the podcast. So that's a a feature that we added back, and that'll happen each and every week. So for five bucks a month, you get that. You also get the podcast early. You get the YouTube version early, and it really gives you the opportunity to dig deep into the archives of the show. So that's five bucks a month. Uh, Check out the new tiers. Check out close to 500 audio posts of historic content, close to 150 different video posts, vintage photographs in the hundreds, 8 millimeter films, and much more. Uh, We have that all accessed here at $15 a month, which gets you all of it. And if you want to go to a higher level, those higher levels also get you guest appearances on this podcast. So go to uh, patreon.com forward slash John Arezzi for more information on that let's bring on our co-host our producer our creative director marsh coming to you direct from albuquerque new mexico the united states dust bowl hey you yeah you... yeah we're, we're doing hey, it. what are you doing today how's everything out there you're a little busy <laughs> It's been crazy. I went and saw a really cool show last night and uh, ended up talking with one of the performers and I've already started working with him on some t-shirt designs and stuff and it's been cool. Nice. It's been a lot going on though. Yeah. Yeah. We're uh, we're extremely busy these days, uh, aren't we? I, I, I dragged yeah. you into my world of insanity and uh, so far you're handling it pretty well, Marsh. Yeah, I just... Just let it go. You know, whatever happens. Say, okay, that's today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we got it's a, been cool, we though. We got a good one today. Yeah, we got a good one today. I mean, show number five was, and I can't believe we're already done this, the fifth one already of the Rewind. So we're moving along pretty quickly here. And uh, this one, from start to finish, it was loaded with a lot of stuff. There was a lot. You When you, but like, I mean, okay, so you're five weeks in. You've been saying since week one that you wanted two hours because you knew you were going to have a lot of stuff. You know, I need but by this point, you're barely a month and a half, and this feels like a, a 
classic mid-run show. Like, this has everybody. You know what I mean? Outside of Paul and Foley, this has so much stuff that becomes staples. Yeah. Well, you know, even from the Lou Albano making his debut, the Johnny Rods thing was really interesting. Um, you know, the twins, obviously, uh, you know, being the twins, they're, they're now in they're now in full form power twin mode yep. uh, uh, on this show. And then uh, there were so many others. I mean, uh, Napolitano, George Napolitano. We had some debut callers that were legendary in the history of the show. Uh, we had a few short little interviews that I don't even know if we're putting in, but uh, we're going to we're going to just let it flow. You know, you decided that this week we're going to give a little bit more extended versions of some of these clips uh, and we're going to just kind of listen in with the, you and the and the podcast listeners. And I want to remind everybody that the entire show on edited is on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash John Arezzi. So uh, uh, strap yourselves in. It's going to be an interesting ride today. Yeah, because this was a crazy one where it felt like you had like through stories. There was stuff that just kept coming back. And so instead of having like 13 clips where you guys pick on Marty, <laughs> I have like, I was going to do one master clip of all the times you guys picked on him throughout that one episode. Uh, yeah. And really, there's a jab at him in almost every single one of these clips, plus a clip of just a series <laughs> of little jabs. Like you guys went heavy on this one. So we did. It's funny because you had mentioned that, like, you don't think he stays coming back much after this. No, 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 right? no, no, he doesn't. I mean, he wore out his welcome pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, when you get constant abuse each week, because he was, you know, he was in there uninvited, shows up, comes in the studio like he's part of the crew. And he wasn't. And, you know, and, and he's doing, re you know, we'll, we'll let the listeners hear. But, uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was getting to the point where it's like, all right, dude. Um, this is what you're going to get if you show up every week. Yeah. <laughs> Were you guys kind of annoyed at him in general? Yes. Okay. Because I couldn't tell if this was like playful banter or you guys were just picking on a guy. But he took it well. And, not, you know, you don't want to disparage anybody. And, you know, he's still yeah. around. He might even be listening to this uh, today. He moved down to Texas. And I hear from him uh, occasionally on Facebook with a little message. Uh, but uh, back in the day, he was someone who. Um, I uh, just felt he was a part of the part of the show, and uh, in the beginning, these first few episodes, he kind of was, but that was uh, not because he was invited. Hmm. So it's like the how twins too. Yeah, I met him at the radio station at WNYG uh, because he knew some people there, yeah. and he might have been um, trying to uh, get a gig or do some sell. I don't, you know, I really don't know the backstory. I know he's introduced him by somebody there. Couldn't even be my sister. I don't know. Uh, oh. Possibly. Uh, and, uh, and that's how I met him. And then he introduced me to Mark Tendler. And then I'd also got to imagine that just, he's quite obviously a big fan of wrestling and you may have been yes. the only access he had to certain avenues of that. And the only radio station that was doing wrestling at that time more come on as as time goes on but it could just be that you know the i'm with the band complex just wanted to be there here's that there's a yeah. wrestling show and he goes oh i'm gonna go be a part of this without realizing yeah. that a you paid for all your time i mean he realized but you know what i'm saying you paid for yeah. all your time and you had a vision and a path and something you were trying to do and he just wasn't a part of that yeah, and it was kind of like the G-Man who wanted to be part of it so badly, and he worked as an on-air personality for NYG, and he tried to get that gig over Rob Leonard that Rob explained. And yeah. uh, even on this episode, I don't, I don't know if we have the clip or not, but it's certainly it's certainly in the um, complete version that you'll hear on Patreon. The G-Man calls in under an assumed name to ask a question. Really? I don't think I caught that. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's it was you know I know the voice. You may yes. have not known to use a different name, but uh, it, it was directed to the twins, I believe. Um, but I was like, it's the G Man when I heard back when I heard the episode back a few days ago. Huh. We'll see if I have that call. If do you remember the, the question specifically? Not specifically, no. Okay, but we'll see if very I have it in there. Yeah, but... put it that way. There was a few who called in who were. 
really was it might have been the guy who called them this, this his hero. You guys are my hero or whatever. I think that was him. Yeah. I think that could have uh, been the one. I think that was I think it could have been the one. Yeah. Yeah. But uh yeah, we got a bunch of clips going on. Uh we'll get a little bit more into Marty. And I'm glad you mentioned Bruce because at the end of last episode, I didn't even really catch it, but you had I caught it on the edit. You said that, you know, thanks to your producers, Rob and Bruce. And I think last week was the first week you mentioned Bruce as a, a producer because he wasn't there the first couple yeah. of days, right? And he might have been, too. He might have been right from the beginning that I just didn't acknowledge him. And he was just there as kind of a helper to answer phone calls. And and then his role evolved. He was pretty aggressive. Um, and uh, And, you know, he started really stepping up to the plate after he got used to the – the gig every week because this was his first experience with radio. He was a salesperson for PC Richards electronics store when I met him through my sister. And uh, now look at him all these years later, 35 years later, we're launching a show with him and Wally Backman of the 86 Mets. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So I guess it worked out for him, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Not so bad. Uh, And I'm going to bring him on the show when, when we hear his voice, but let's get into it. Yeah, yeah. Let's get into it. Let's start with um. This is a little bit of a super clip because it's Lou Albano. It's the first time you know him. Uh, I thought he had a cool little uh, take on the WWE versus uh, NWA, and then uh, also you get him to talk about the Power Twins, which I thought was cool. So kind of combined those two parts of the interview, but the whole interview is on Patreon. Uh, but here's a few minutes. You've been out of the ring, so to speak, for quite a while. Any chance of you ever coming back with perhaps maybe the NWA? Uh, the NWA, there's always that possibility. Either the NWA or if a new organization started, I'd never go back with the WWF because uh, I feel they claimed that wrestling is a show today and so forth. Well, if it is a show, the WWF has made it that way. Uh, they have the birds, the monkeys, the parakeets, and so forth. I like to feel that wrestling in the days of Bruno San Martino had more uh, legitimate wrestling. Uh, true, there was showmanship in wrestling. We always knew that. Uh, we realized that sports entertainment and that's fine, but they were still the world's greatest athletes, and even today, I believe they're still the greatest athletes in the world, but it's gotten a little bit too much of this, uh, the theatrics, you know? You have once a year a big hype when Cindy Lauper came in, that was great, with Mr. T, with Liberace, with Billy Martin, uh, Muhammad Ali. Once a year, something like that is fine, but not to overly expose, I mean, keep doing these monkeys and parakeets and birds and snakes, and it becomes too much of a comedy. So I would say that wrestling in the days, let's go back to Argentina Rocker, let's go back to the old Luces, let's go back to people like well, even today's mark at the NWA, they have great wrestlers down there. Rick Flair, people like Steve Williams, people like Mike Rotunda, people like Barry Windham, people like this uh, Rick Steiner. You're talking about class act wrestlers. I mean, these are great amateurs. And guys like uh, Bruno San Martino and David San Martino, I mean, people can wrestle. The Samoans, they don't uh, resort on wrestling. They're wild men, they this and that, but they have more basic wrestling knowledge. And that's what I'd like to see happen to wrestling again. So there is a chance of me going back, uh, not to the WWF, but perhaps coming in as a manager. Yes, in the meantime, I've been doing movies. I did Wise Guys with Danny DeVito and Joe Piscopo. One of my favorites. I've got uh, Body Slam that have been playing on HBO. And the show, you know, that was with uh, Roddy Piper. And Bruno was in it. Cameos and Freddie Blassie and uh, Abdel Casey. And the, uh, one of the Powers of Pain was in it. And we've we've uh, done several movies. And I did a couple of Miami Vices. And uh, when Hollywood Squares was on. And gong shows and kid shows. And but several stuff. That's keeping Captain busy. But possibly I would get back again. Yeah, because a lot of fans call up the program, write us letters, send us postcards. Uh, you know, wondering if the captain will ever get back in the ring. For example, today in Nashville, Tennessee, Ricky Steamboat is facing Ric Flair for the NWA world title. Many feel that this match is one of the best matches in years. What's your expert opinion? Well, I saw the last match, and I believe it was an unbelievable encounter. I never believed the two athletes get in that ring and perform the way they did. Rick Steamboat is a very competent wrestler. He's a class guy. I like Rick a lot. Uh, I've got to say that the, this uh, uh, Ric Flair is one of the greatest champions of all time. He's what I call a true champion. I mean, whether you like his attitude, or cockiness and his showmanship and actually as a wrestler if you watch him in that ring the man is it's like poetry in motion I mean the man's a machine in the ring uh, I predict him uh, coming back as a champion again uh, not because I feel that the Ric Flair is not I mean the Rick, Rick Steamboat is not a great wrestler but I just think there's a little more experience with, with this Ric Flair the guy is a sensational wrestler uh, again I'm not particularly fond of his attitude and his cockiness and uh, this and that but that's a lot of showmanship but actually when it gets down to basics of wrestling I believe he's got it all the 
Bruno you know, Bruno is without a doubt the greatest champion I believe of all time not only as a champion but as an individual as a compassionate understanding person as a friend to everybody uh, the only one I can say maybe I don't know this uh, but in my opinion maybe the only one that could probably knock him would be the uh, WWF because he's not with them anymore that would be the only reason I could say because Bruno's been nothing but a credit to the business and drawn nothing but millions of dollars throughout the world and also done a lot for charity and he's a fine upstanding individual and so is his son mm-hmm. well truly tr- 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 Bruno tr- Truly, Bruno is a living legend, and David is an uh, outstanding young man. Uh, David has got a lot to, to uh, compare to his dad, but I believe in the future David will. David weighs about 220 now, his last weighing, 222. He's about 5'10", uh, a very good amateur wrestler. And David, the San Martino, is going to come into his own and show that he's truly a great talent. Yeah, we've been speaking to David uh, recently about uh, we're going to be doing some local shows up here in this area, and we'll be using David San Martino uh, on those shows because we just feel that uh, with the, the power that he possesses, uh, that he could truly be one of the greats. I believe he could, and he's one of the people that I would be looking at. I've talked to Bruno uh, as far as managing. If I came back into managing, I'd be considering it David San Martino. Mm-hmm. I have uh, sitting here with me today in, in our studio one of the most uh, exciting young tag teams in the business today. They're working the independent circuit now, just came back from Calgary. Uh, they're uh, identical twins. They're called the Power Twins. Oh, uh, Larry, Larry and David. So uh, they'll be uh, appearing uh, in the local area upcoming, and uh, we'd like to have you come out and take a look at them. These boys. Great. You know, I, uh, someone mentioned them before. I've never seen them wrestle, but I heard they're very capable uh, wrestlers and uh, individuals, and they've got a lot of basic wrestling knowledge. And, uh, you know, there's so many young, uh, great teams today that are out there. They've had teams like this uh, uh, Jim Powers, and if you remember this, um, uh, what was the other fellow's name? Bum, 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 just a minute. They're with the WWF for a while. Powers and... Uh, and Roma? Paul Roma. Right. Now, that's a very good team, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, if they would have been schooled right and brought along the proper way, they're a very good team. This team that you're talking about, they're called the Power Twins? The Power Twins, Larry and David, identical twins. They're about six foot... Them to me. They're supposed to be very good wrestlers. Six, foot two, like six foot two, three hundred pounds each, Lou. Well, I mean, you're talking about super giants. These are big men, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, in my day, guys, five foot ten, two hundred ten pounds were big guys. Today, the athletes are bigger, they're stronger, they're better. Uh, I don't think we, could, we would stand a chance like getting in the ring against guys like this. These guys got to be great athletes. Oh, they certainly the future, are. I, I, I think they've got something to look forward to. If we can keep wrestling back to the basics of wrestling and not to all the clowning, you know, let's get a little more wrestling involved. Well, these boys definitely come, they look like they come from the old school. And uh, they did a show last week and totally squashed a couple of opponents, Preston Steele and the Cheetah Kid. Well, and they'll be appearing in the 11 Man Battle Royal upcoming in a couple of weeks. But uh, any other projects that, that, are you, uh, that you're involved in right now that you'd like to talk about? Maybe TV, film, any other? Well, special well, projects films coming up and uh, we've got a movie later on coming out called prisoners of rock and roll and again wise guys has uh, been breaking all records in home video it's done over 70 million dollars that's with danny devito and joe piscopo you can now rent it with uh, it's an mgm film starring brian de palma well, brian de palma directed it actually with danny and joe and i played frankie the fixer Acavano in it and uh, thank you mr Acavano. thank you mr Acavano. <laughs> And actually, uh, this Body Slam is doing very well. It's been on HBO, and I've got a couple other movies in the wind that I don't want to mention the names right now. Uh, but I have uh, two other movies that it looks like I'm going to sign with very shortly, and uh, they're keeping us going. Well, that's great, Lou. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Pleasure uh, talking to you. And, uh, you know, we'd like to have you on here live one of these days uh, that you can talk to the people live. Uh, but best of luck to you in the future. We appreciate you coming on, and uh, we wish you nothing but the best. Well, with people like yourself that are uh, doing so much for professional wrestling and with the so much uh, informational type show, and a person that's so qualified like yourself. I appreciate I it. It's a great honor for you. I know you're a friend of George, uh, George Napolitano, yes. a good buddy of mine. And any time uh, a person like you or George are involved in the show, especially yourself, uh, I feel honored to be on the show, and it'll be a great honor for me to come on live or anytime you want. It's a great honor. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Okay, thank you, Lou. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. The great Captain Lou Albano, and uh, Lou is certainly... One of the best in the business, um, one of the best wrestling managers. If I could follow in his footsteps in any way, I'd consider myself a success in this business. And I think I got good, a good start here with the Power Twins. Delusions of grandeur. Oh, yeah, you were on your way. You had already said you were going to file your teeth for your next show so you could bite someone's head. <laughs> <laughs> and now you got the Power Twins, so you're basically Captain Lou. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Captain Johnny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mr. Wrestling, Captain yeah, Johnny. Yeah. That was good to hear that. That was uh, great. Lou, I loved Lou Albano. He was amazing. Really he was did. even talking about how he's a character in a book that someone wrote where he kind of plays himself yeah. as a mentor. And I was like, that's yeah. crazy. 
he had a lot of a lot of projects going on all the time, all the time. He was involved in a lot of a lot of stuff. Yeah, that was yeah. cool. I never forget my first interaction with him ever. It was when I was a kid, and I had shot a picture of a bloody Lou Albano. That was my first picture published in a magazine. November seventy two's Wrestling Review had this uh, photo contest where fans would submit photographs. And, um, my picture made it and, uh, you know, uh, but this picture was just a classic picture, just full of blood. And I had some prints made and cause Albano would typically stand outside the dressing room at Madison square garden outside the curtain w- way before the crowd, you know, just when the crowd started entering and he'd just look around and, and, uh, I had had some prints made of that shot. And, uh, I saw him outside of that curtain and I brought him I brought the picture over to him and he signed it for me and I gave him a copy of it and uh, I'll never forget that because when I saw him he he had gig marks like all over his face like on his cheeks everywhere and so I was like holy smokes look at him I mean he's just he's all cut up so that was my first interaction with him when I was 14 you know so that was cool but uh and then when I got deeper into business, he would be the first one at the bar, at the Savoy Bar after the garden shows. And he'd be there, and then you'd have a pleasantry or two with him. And it wasn't until this time where I actually got to really know him. Uh, I got his number from George uh, and uh, Napolitano, and George uh, gave me his number. And, and Lou, because of George, the friendship, and he knew me from ringside at the garden because I took a lot of pictures backstage as well, but... Uh, it started really a good, great relationship with him uh, after this broadcast, and we did a lot of stuff together. That's cool. Yeah, I remember you. Eventually, you book him for someone's birthday party and stuff, and I mean the bowling alley. You guys, yeah, forming their lanes, man. <laughs> Nick, <laughs> Nick's son. <laughs> Mixed Weren't you up in Farmingdale no. just the other, just like a month ago or something? I asked you if you're going to go bowling. Yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah. Well, no, I wasn't going bowling. That's where I stay on Long Island when I'm in town. Yeah. Oh, you got to find the lanes. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I thought that was cool. I, I, I love that he was. Uh, he had to explain why he didn't like the WWF's product without you know, undermining what he did, which I thought was really cool because he's like, Oh, it's all showmanship. It's all sports entertainment. And, and you can't do that all the time. And then he's all like, but like, I mean, yeah, I brought in Cindy Lauper and the rock and wrestling thing. I was heavily involved with, you know, he's kind of being like, it's okay to do that once in a while. He goes, but you can't do it every week. And I was actually like, you know, it makes sense. You know, like it didn't come off like hypocritical, but it mm-hmm. was one of those things where he knew how someone might say it was. And so immediately was all like, here's my reasoning on why I believe that. And I thought it was smart. Yeah. He's a sharp guy. Quick wit, great talker, great promo. One of the best promos of all time. Oh, he's amazing. I love it. Um, and then also I thought it was cool that he'd be, he said he'd come back to to manage David San Martino. Yeah. Like, that, that could have been big. Which he did. He, which he did. Uh, on yeah. some of the indie shows that Tommy D promoted. Yeah. Ah, Tommy D. Yeah, it was a um, match with Koloff and David San Martino with Lou in David's corner and uh, hand, uh, Luscious Johnny V in the corner of Koloff. That's cool. And I actually have, I actually have um, a backstage interview of them all together like kayfabe interview that uh, we should be coming up, I believe when we get to like November, December of 89. That'll be cool. That'll be really neat. Do you still have the, the photo he signed for you? I uh, recently sold it on eBay. Oh, well, <laughs> so yes and no. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It's just neat. Cause you know, you were a kid who took the photo. I've I've got one photo I took of um, Hacksaw when I saw him when I was in high school and I had my camera out. And I actually just about two years ago saw him and had him sign it. And it was really cool to just be like, hey, that's the picture I took of of him. So just kind of Hey, cool. listen, people people love that stuff, you know, and I'm like, what am I gonna do with you know, oh uh, there's that was that was like I think it was like three or four hundred dollars I got for that picture. A yeah, well, I mean it's three also and like three and a half. Yeah. 
Oh, so it was, even, it was a small print even. It was a three and a half by three and a half, and it was all like old with, you know, it was kind of like it wasn't in the best condition. And, and he signed the back of it, the back oh. of the picture, just his name. Yeah, interesting. So, uh, but yeah, it's also but kind I included of like the a- magazine. I included the magazine it was in and a little certificate of authenticity. And, you know, I'm seeing That's some cool. crazy stuff on eBay because I'm looking, some people, there's some like vintage wrestling negatives. Like, uh, you know, like a one strip of a wrestling negative is going for like $100 with names that are not even known. Yeah, people are so trying some little... stuff. Yeah, I saw someone on there because, you know, I'm a Andy Kaufman. Yeah. Uh, you know how I am with that. So I look up Andy Kaufman stuff all the time. There was somebody who had regular four by six pictures that looked like from like a 120 camera. You know, those little ones with the flash yes. bulb on top. Uh, yeah. It looked like it's it was that map. kind of a. Yeah, the Instamatics. It looked like it was that kind of a photo from the audience when Andy Kaufman was wrestling. And so it was all kind of like washed out with like red from the, just the distance and all. And they were asking for like two or $300 a piece. And it was, they're not great photos. It's from an event that we've all seen tons of footage of, and there's great up close photos. And I was just kind of surprised. And it wasn't even the negatives. It was just, here's a print of it. Yeah. I was all like, that's insane. But Oh, I think, you know, the negatives that I've seen, you know, like going for $80 to $100 for a sh- one strip of a negative, not even the print. Imagine if I put something up like a Andre the Giant, for example, or like a Bruno strip, or, you know, I got thousands of these things lying around. I'm like, that could be a little cottage industry. It could, because the other thing with negatives uh, is the negative is the copyright. If you own the negative of a photo, you own the rights of that photo. And so... Yeah depending on if someone's selling the negative, then yeah, that person can make as many prints as they want. If they see that print show up on someone else's show, they can say, Hey, I've copyrighted that. You have to pay me for it. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. so, I mean, you get your money back if it, if it's the right person, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like but, I'm like, I'm sitting with thousands. So that's why I'm, I'm thinking about that. I'm like, mm, maybe I can take some of these that are not my, you know, my upper echelon. Yeah. And yeah, put them up well, there. We'll see. Especially because you did some of those backstage ones. You got to have multiples of similar, oh. right? Oh, yeah. A lot you know of shots mean? in the backstage. Like I would take, you know, 10, 15, 20 shots of a guy backstage. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. Pretty cool. Uh, let's keep moving, though, because it's about to get fun. Back to the show. <laughs> that was all interesting, but it's about to get fun because now is when we get into you guys are Wiley. Um, we got the Power Twins. Uh, immediately followed up by uh, my favorite caller making his debut, which sets the tone for the rest of the show. <laughs> yes. And now we have some special guests in the studio reading our next commercial. That's right, John. I got something for you lowlifes out there. If you're taking a train, you're a daily commuter, you're an occasional traveler, you got the orange and white taxi is for you. At any Long Island Railroad station... Well, basically in Huntington, they're, they're, based, they're based in Huntington, you dial 271-3600 for a fast, prompt service to all boroughs and airports. You'll get where you're going in comfortable cabs with courteous drivers. That number again is, you, you ready, John? You got your pen? Yeah, I'm writing it down. It's 271-3600. That's right, 271-3600 for orange and white taxi. This way you can't miss it if you're a real moron. It's at the Long Island Railroad Station. Why don't you say it again for the morons who are... It's the orange and white white taxi. taxi. Orange and white. It's in Huntington. That service that never sleeps. They drink a lot of coffee. That's right. And they are official sponsors of the Pro Wrestling Spotlight. And John, before we go any further, I'd like to say that Lou Albano is a very wise man. Yes, he is. He never met us, but he he said very nice things about us because he's obviously a well-known man, knows a lot about wrestling like yourself. Well, we're just here trying to, um, to promote the sport of pro wrestling. And we feel that Power Twins are going to be uh, the next top tag team in the business today. Along with our manager, John Anthony. That's right. And we're going to take our first phone call at the Pro Wrestling Spotlight. we got Joey from Babylon. Joey, you're on the air. Yeah, good evening. Uh, I'd like to just say it's great to 
to have a show like yours on the air. And uh, just to comment, do you know of any of the results from the uh, the champion clash today well, at the NWA? We're, we're in the process of compiling the results, and before we go off the air, we'll be giving you a complete rundown of what happened at the pay-per-view show today. I was hoping that the Nature Boy won. I've been a fan of wrestling for over 30 years. Well, that's my, that's my personal prediction. I think Ric Flair is going to uh, get that title back today. Ric Flair is the greatest wrestler beyond a shadow of a doubt. I think whoever's done it could have and nobody has the personality and the flamboyancy in the class of a Mr. Ric Flair. One other comment, I noticed at the NWA, I don't know what's going on with Barry Windham. You know if Barry Windham's going to come to the WF? WF? Well, from what I understand, Barry's wrestling for Dusty Rhodes down in Florida, and uh, he is not with the NWA right now. And his brother Kendall, I believe, has just left as well. But Barry is in the process of, uh, of wrestling in Florida. Whether he comes back to WWF remains to be seen. And as soon as we hear something, we'll pass along the information to our listeners. Just two other quick questions. Does sure. anybody know where the gorgeous one, Jimmy Garvin, is wrestling? Any of our experts here in the uh, yeah. studio? Uh, no, we don't right now. He would be a great guy for the WWF yeah, we, to get. We could, we could check on that as well for you. And another guy, I think the WWF, he, right now this guy is in the uh, Florida circuit with Dusty Rose, but I think he'd be a major force to have, and that's Al Perez, the Latin Hearts Rob. Did you ever hear him? Yes, I have. Uh, I have one of the comments. Uh, I have to respect Ricky Steamboat. I must admit he... Uh, is a phenomenal athlete. I just think it was kind of, you know, uh, some kind of howdy doody routine. Bring him, bring his wife and kid into the ring with him, you know. Well, he's so family oriented, uh, and, uh, you know, I understand a lot of people are making complaints about his family that he's bringing them around too much. Uh, you know, he might be, but, uh, you know, that's him. He can't change his ways. He really feels close to his family. He loves his wife and his son, and that's Ricky Steamboat. But I don't think you'd be seeing them around after today because I feel Ric Flair is getting that belt back. And what do you think about Steamboat, his future in wrestling? Do you think he'll stay there? I still think that even if he does lose today, I think he'll still be around. Matter of fact, I understand that he has agreed uh, to terms with the NWA to continue wrestling in them for an indefinite period of time. So you might look for him to maybe even take on Lex Luger or Sting or in maybe a scientific match or uh, team up with someone to try to get some tag team titles. I think you'll see Ricky Steamboat around for a while. That's a guy who's a, uh, talking about Sting. He's a phenomenal athlete. The man, there's no stop as far as his wrestling ability. I just think he, his routine is somewhat of a buffoon, the way he smacks his chest and paints his face and wears that stupid hair, Mohican hairstyle. I think, you know, if uh, he acted normal, he'd be definitely a future uh, champion for the NWA. Any comments, Larry Devin? Well, John, this guy's obviously a janitor or something like that. A guy who wants to dress up a little, look good in the ring. You know, that's, I'm all for that. This guy, uh, this guy's probably just looking his hair back like in the 50s, John. Well, I didn't say that, but, you know, my, my personal opinion, the ideal champion... I don't care about your personal opinion. Guys out there that make a living wants to look good, and who cares what you think? Well, you better hear what I think, because I am the dean of professional wrestlers. All right, the dean of... I think of you're the dean of morons, is what you are. Okay, look, I want to make another comment while I'm on the air. No, we don't want to hear it anyway. You're an idiot. Whatever, whatever. I got something to say, power, whatever you call yourself. Uh, last week, a young lady called up about having some kind of uh, commentary of, uh, for someone who was visually impaired in the arenas. And that really is a uh, good thing. I mean, I, I don't see why they can't have some kind of headphone hooked up so you can get the uh, play-by-play off. Uh, well, we're, pa- we're passing that word along to well, the promoters. Well, obviously, you got to get a pair of, better pair of glasses, John. That's our problem. Well, it's not a matter of getting a pair of glasses, man. You know, the point is that uh, if someone's that obligated to go to the matches and be there and would like to follow the... Uh, well, I consider the sport a professional wrestler, then maybe they could accommodate that need. You know what I'm saying? Well, we understand what you're saying, Joey. Thanks a lot for your call. Thank you, and have a nice night. Bye bye. Six, six. This is a call from West Islip, I believe. Let's go on and see who's very good, Bruce. He, that was a very interesting call. It was probably the best one of the night. I got cut off. Oh, you got cut off. Are you on the air? You know what? I think I got cut off. Hello? Yeah, hello. I'm sorry, we had some technical difficulties there. We do have first-class production facilities here. <laughs> What's happening? Well, we got cut off a minute there. All right, um, you want know, to talk about the, come like one of the callers, uh, the Dean of Wrestling? The Dean of Wrestling, I never heard of him, but he did call before, and, uh... He sounds like he's going to be a big promoter, you know. Yeah, he sounds that way, but don't count on it. Like an awful lot about wrestling. Well, he might. A lot of people know an awful lot about wrestling, but did, did they have the bucks to promote a show? That's another question. Anything else? Thank yeah, you. I, I don't think it was about the Mets. I think the chances are to repeat as 
Uh, but uh, buddy, this is a wrestling show, not a baseball show. If you want to call a, if you want to call a sports show, call WFAN. Thank you very much. I don't know, John. You don't even look like Mob <laughs> Albert. I don't look like well, I look like the Albert brothers maybe combined. I think so. That's a possibility. That's the only crank call. Yes, you want to know about the Mets. So once again, anybody who has any other questions outside of the wrestling industry, don't even bother to call us because we're going to hang up on you and we're going to have the power twins perhaps say a few choice words. That's right, John. If you if you care about baseball, call Sportsline. This ain't the place. Mm-hmm. And if any of you idiots have any real questions, call up right now. 661-1440. <laughs> Now I would like, yeah, what do you want to talk about? The Mets? Sure, why not? That's what was so funny to me is the guy specifically, I want to ask you about the Mets. And we've listened to the first five episodes. You didn't bring up baseball yet. You start talking about baseball no. later because, you know, Bruce will ask, why are you in a bad mood? And you're like, well, the Mets, you know, but immediately, hey, I want to know about the Mets. What do you, do you think they're going to do it? And you just click. <laughs> Went off on them. <laughs> I thought <laughs> of all the things they could have asked where you thought that you might be like, well, let me tell you what I think. It would be a Mets question, yeah. which also made me wonder, what have, did you recognize that guy's or, voice? Did he know you? <laughs> no, I don't think so. That was a Mets heel turn, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was shocked when I shocking. heard it back. I'm like, Wow. Yeah, I'm surprised because I could have seen you giving a quick answer, like, hey, this is what I think, but that's really not the topic today, so we're going to move it along. Right. But you didn't. But I just, just fucked that guy. <laughs> I blew him off. <laughs> you blew him off and said, don't ever call here. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of the pets? Get out of my the life. twins were rubbing off on me. <laughs> it's so good. Well, I think part of it was this, right? Like, you were being the Power Twins manager. So you yeah. started in this <laughs> this window trying to heal on people. Yeah. You were and trying to keep up with them. I was <laughs> picking on Joey. <laughs> Being wrestling. I like you know what I like about him too is he doesn't get razzled. No. But you can also hear him like like he's not a super fast thinker on his feet. Yeah. Whatever you power, whatever you call yourself, and then moves on. You know what I mean? Like he kind of wants to be like, and you too. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> he he had a great interaction with Cactus, where he goes off on Cactus, and and Cactus goes off on him, and that'll be upcoming several months from now. But uh, that was classic. He always handled himself really well against everybody, and I don't, and he never took yeah. it personal, which I think is great. No. Yeah, you know, uh, but again. Did you notice he asked where Barry Windham was? I did. Do you remember that that becomes almost a calling card for Joey? Barry Windham. I kept laughing towards the Barry Windham. Where's Barry at? Where's Barry Windham? Hey, I think why don't they put the title on Barry? Hey, you know, yeah, that's his who'd guy. be good in the WWF right now is Barry Windham. That Barry. Was his, yeah. yeah. That's, his, that's his guy, man. Hey, listen, all of the classic Joey calls... All you got to do is in the search engine of Patreon is just search Joey from Babylon, Joey from North Babylon, and all those calls will come, all those uh, episodes will come up. Amazing. Yeah. He's uh, one of our favorites of all time. He cracks me up every time. But yeah, that, I, I thought that was remarkable because obviously I haven't heard everything from the beginning, but like I remember making a comment last time. I was like, he asked about Barry a lot. I wonder what Barry did that well, we won him over. Well, it turns out always. <laughs> it always, always been won over. So, uh, and then, yeah, the other caller calls in to just talk about the Dean of wrestling, which becomes a thing. Almost every caller you had had something to say about Joey or Marty. Impactful. <laughs> yeah. He did the one thing I'm Dean of wrestling. And then everyone's like, I'm calling in to ask about the Dean. <laughs> it was amazing. Uh, oh, oh, and boy. then the power twins started reading the ads. Yes. Yeah, they were doing the live reads for Orange and White Taxi. <laughs> My old partner from the music biz. Um, That's what that was, right? That yeah, yeah. That was one of my old partners from the music business. He didn't last long on the show. Orange and White. Well, do you, maybe because the ads weren't what he was hoping for? <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't even hear them. Okay. It was, it was uh, more of a donation more than anything else. 
Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they they end up reading almost all the orange and white taxi ads. I think it becomes yeah, like I, know, I know the guy movie. wasn't listening. <laughs> Which is also funny because this is, you know, only a couple weeks in. And like you said, they're full force power twins. And yeah, well, let's read an ad. Yeah, I want to read this one. Look, you idiots. <laughs> Orange and white, idiots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, power twins are on one, as always. They're never off one. But Johnny Rods calls in. And I was going to part where the power twins chime in but i realized that to understand what the power twins are saying you need to hear a little bit of johnny because i was surprised by this interview okay just because the length of it was also such that like you were trying to steer him you know the conversation needed to go and he really wasn't having it he kept kind of interrupting and trailing off and it was a little weird i was kind of confused by it and then power twins have want to say something and i was like oh (laughs) so this one i think is like six minutes or so but it's johnny rod's first appearance on here Uh, and he notably screened a lot of he never comes back no oh all right uh yeah notably he's trained a lot of big name guys like like taz yes I remember Black Gorman from the from the seventies, and I also saw him at your last show. I think you got a you got a rough time ahead of you. And we wish you the best of luck with Black Gorman, and also against Mondo Clean. Well, uh, you got two rough. Well, right for Mondo, uh, <laughs> if Mondo doesn't uh, do me in, uh, this guy's looking for now. He, what he has, he, he has this Cuban savage as his friend, Carl, man, that he's been uh, dealing with, and I had wrestled him already. I, I beat him, but I had a, a little bit of confrontation. You saw that. Yes, with, I did. Uh, Black Goldman and Black Goldman is really looking forward to doing it. And now they're, they're both teaming up together somehow as buddies and trying to confuse me. Not only that, they got the captain uh, manager that uh, he's really doing the, a good job by confusing everybody in that. So, so that's why they, these guys could really do a job on you. But I got my eyes on him and. You know, if I have to think that I got eyes behind my back, uh, I'm on a track. Well, it sounds like it sounds like you have to have eyes in the back of well, your head with these you, two opponents. He's, 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 he's an ox. He's a veteran, and uh, I'm a veteran, but he's a veteran that's probably a little longer than me. Mm-hmm. And I tell you, he's no uh, pushover. I'll tell you that. Okay, Johnny, I don't know if you mind or not, but we have a couple of guests in the studio that wanted to say something to you. Oh, sure. uh, they're a, a hot young tag team, Larry and David, the Power Twins. Uh, they did want to say something. Larry and David, do you want to say something to Johnny about these upcoming matches? Uh, how you doing, Johnny? Hey, which one is this? This is David. David, how you doing? How you guys been? Good, Johnny. You're doing a lot of traveling. You know about this upcoming match with Mondo? I think he's going to tear your head off. Because we've seen, we've seen, you know something? We've seen him wrestle in Germany. He's a great wrestler, Johnny. All his experience, I think... You know, you're going to have a hard time because I'm listening to you speak now for the last few minutes. And obviously, you've been taking a lot of slams, a lot of shots to the head. I think it'd be, uh, it won't take Mondo much to, to pin you. What do you think, Larry? Well, Mondo's I think. Mondo's a great chance. I, I tell you, though, he better have some, very, a lot of strong stuff because uh, I just, I think that uh, after all these years, you know where I've been. Well, Johnny, we had you in the ring. We know what it's all about to have you in the ring. I mean, we had you and your partner. You guys actually, Canada. you guys, you guys. Oh, we wrestled Canada. Johnny a few years ago in Canada, and we beat him and his partner all over Is that Western true, Canada. Yeah. That's not true. That's well, true. Well, words are easy to say. Uh-huh. Words are easy to say. Yeah, that's what Johnny said. Well, Johnny, you know the truth. We know the truth. You know. And I think this guy Mondo. Looks like we may have an upcoming feud. I know you don't want to step with us and step in the ring with us. So I think this guy Mondo, you know, will take care of the business for us anyway. <laughs> Well, Johnny, all we can say here is well, we wish you the best of luck, and I'm sure the Power Twins, uh, uh, they have a little adversity here. They, they, uh, I guess you guys are friends of Mondo's, aren't you? Oh, yeah, we, we travel with him all over Germany and Europe, and we see him wrestle. I think he's a great young wrestler, like you said, John, mm-hmm. and I think he'll have no problem with Johnny Rods. I like Mondo. I think he's got a good chance to beat you, Johnny, and bash in front of all your hometown fans. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you guys are on his side because... Uh, I have a few guys on my side too, so I don't have to worry about it. Well, I'm not a betting man. Uh, I know I'm not a betting man myself. You guys luck in the years to come because you're gonna need it to. There's a lot of uh, competition out there, and uh, 
uh, I don't have to worry. I've been on a lot of competition. That means I've, there's nothing that surprises me. And uh, if I had to dish something out, I could dish it out real quick. Well, I've seen you myself personally, and I know you're a rough, uh, uh, rough house wrestler. They want to worry me out there about uh, newcoming guys like these guys have to worry about what's out there. And, and that's their problem. About hey, we don't have much to worry I've about, I've all that. I have uh, wrestled uh, the best and, and Johnny, you got a team for us to wrestle? We'll take on any of your boys you got. We understand you got a pair of twins, and uh, we'd like to wrestle them. Anything up in the near future for that? Because you know, Johnny, we, we've traveled. We've been to a lot of traveling. We've been all over the United States, and uh, we were working for Cal- San Pete for a while. And there was like two other sets of twins we came up with, and we retired them, and I think it'd be no problem retiring yours. <laughs> I think I should be bought. Talk is cheap. Well, Johnny, we'll we'll find out. Anytime, so it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll, well, listen, Johnny, we want to thank you for your time right now. The Power Twins are anxious to get in there and get your twins. If you ever want to set up a match, uh, we'll be speaking to you in the near future. We wish you the best of luck in your upcoming matches with Mondo Clean and also Black Gordman. Uh, those are two rough, uh, rough opponents, and we just wish you the best of luck here at the Pro Wrestling Spotlight, and hopefully you'll retain the title. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. And, uh, I just hope the fans to get out there and uh, uh, check it out because it's going to be a... Uh, it's going to be a battle. Yep, a brawl. All right, Johnny. Thank you very much for your time, sir. All right, be good. Bye-bye. That's the Power Twins and Johnny Roz making that challenge, making a challenge to their twins. Uh, I've seen these guys in, in action, and I saw... It was not a pretty thing when they fell out of one of the guy fell out of the ring and slammed his head on a on the concrete and busted his head wide open. And I think if they ever got into the ring with you two guys, it'll be all over. Do you know what I think, uh, John? What's up? I think they're gonna end up marble mouth like Johnny Raj. You hear him talk? The guy's always taking a lot of shots at heads over the year. And he doesn't, you know, he doesn't have the same quick uh, well, one thing I, he used to have. Well, uh, that's true. Johnny's been in the ring for several years. One thing I noticed, he is he's a, a still a great wrestler. Uh, when uh, we, we saw him in Brooklyn, he is a great wrestler. Uh, but uh, he's got some, some heavy-duty competition coming up. You know what it is, John? He was a great wrestler in his time. I think he's past his time. The guys he's taking on now are like half his age. I mean, we've had people, you know, like our grandparents that say, what a great wrestler Johnny Rods was. But now he's taking guys half his age. What's he going to do? He's going to get beat. He's going to get pinned in the middle of the ring. He's going to embarrass himself in front of the whole community. I and think Mondo's going to take the belt that night. I like Mondo. Young and strong. He's a stallion. Well, maybe we should all go there and let's say uh, intimidate them. Is that, is that a word in your vocabulary? No, not, not vocabulary. We don't use that word. Mm-hmm. Influence is our, is our word. <laughs> we, we influence. We do not intimidate. Yeah, right. The influence. I mean, that was an embarrassing call for me. Well, then- I was friend. I, I knew Johnny Rods for many years. You know, I wrote it. I think the first time he was called the unpredictable was the article I wrote in Ring Wrestling Magazine, which was uh, probably around 75, 74, 75, around there. Um, but there was legitimate heat between the twins and, and Johnny, which I was not aware of. And the next time we get David on, we'll ask him about that. Because I was trying to be as respectful as possible once the twins went and started doing their thing. Yeah. And Johnny, you know, you you you, you know, you're cro- you're you're on the line that where the show is a kayfabe show, but there are things being said in that conversation from Johnny. If you read between the lines, he's like Johnny knew how to handle himself. He didn't yeah. like the twins. They did something to piss him off. Something happened, and. Uh, uh, that was kind of a shoot without it being the shoot in a lot of ways. Yeah. But I was embarrassed. That's why I kept saying, I respect you. Best of luck to you. I was trying to have him kind of know that I wasn't part of this, what maybe he could have interpreted as being sabotage. I also thought that you kept trying to take what they were saying and almost plead with Johnny to look at this as kayfabe. Oh, look, maybe we have a rivalry coming yeah. up. Oh, maybe we can have a match. Hey, yeah. let's team up right. the two teams against each other. Like, they're actually butting heads, and you're just kind of like, hey, wrestling. Right, I was trying. <laughs> it, was, it was not easy. Yeah. Yeah. That was kind of nuts. It was crazy. Uh, do you remember the twins that Johnny Rods had? Yeah, I think they also then worked for um, – Savoldi, they were the big. They might have been those guys, the Undertakers, that you know those 
guys that eventually yeah. uh, sold the name of the Undertakers. I think it was those dudes. And I remember going to, because uh, I went to Johnny's uh, gym when I first started the show, because I wanted to see if he wanted to advertise and just kind of get the same after all these years. And I, I stayed for the show, and, and one of these guys took a bump outside the ring, and it hit flat on top of his head on the concrete and s- fucking split his head open. Jesus. But it was, uh, yeah, it was an embarrassing one. I was, I felt bad. Um, I felt bad. Uh, I just looked it up and, and um, the guys who played, or not played, the guys who were the Undertakers were trained by Johnny Rod, so it could easily have been them. That, w- that was definitely them then. Now, Johnny trained some, you know, some guys out of there that did pretty well. I mean, and he also, after Sonny uh, did the initial training with uh, Dudley, I think, uh, uh, Devon, uh, and I think Bubba went over there and also got some uh, training from Johnny. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we remember hearing that. But yeah, that was my first thought was the Undertakers, but I was also like, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was crazy. Um, did Johnny was he ever known as much of a talker? Not really a good promo guy. No, he was basically an enhancement talent and he, you know, but he won matches. They put him over, but he wasn't never good with promos. Yeah. But I do, I mean, but his reputation was also that he was, you know, Billy Badass and you shouldn't cross him. It was my understanding. Exactly. Right. He was Billy Badass. Yeah. He could, yeah. he could kick somebody's ass. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of what it, like, I was, you could hear him snickering at them and being like, talk is cheap. Right. Yeah, and right. like, Talk hey, cheap. I might be stumbling over my words, but I'll walk right over you. <laughs> like, yeah, come on down, guys. Gleason's gym, right under the Brooklyn Bridge. Come on, take play, pay me a visit. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was that was nuts. So yeah, we'll have to ask David what uh, where the heat came from there. Yeah, that's a good question for the next uh, appearance by David. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. After that, we got a. I think this is my Marty super clip. <laughs> this is. <laughs> so we've established that at this point, you guys decided you're going to run him out of town one way or another. Because, <laughs> because I guess like part of it is if you're going to be here, we're going to make fun of you because it's funny to us. And also, we didn't invite you here, so it's a little tough to say, "Hey, stop coming." But we also never told you to come. So it seemed like you guys were in a little bit of a, a little bit of a, I mean, you guys are also young. How do you manage that? I was in my thirties. <clears throat> yeah, I was in young. my early thirties. What? It's yeah. I mean, I, I, well, now I, now I look at it as being a kid, <laughs> you know, I was a kid yeah. back then. If you really take a look at it, I don't think I even no. grew up and got really serious about my life and finances and profession until I hit 40. Yeah. It seems to be about and the right time to do that. you are right now. <laughs> it seems to be an appropriate time. So a kid, hey, you start making your big money, you know, in your 40s and your 50s. So, you know, that's what happened. Yeah. Uh, and then because this is the Marty clip and you guys roped him into everything that was happening, but you also like almost never gave him the mic. So if I remember correctly, there's a few different clips from callers or from just an ad read, or there's just a few things where it's just all like, and now you're going to take a jab at Marty. So this is kind of a Marty super clip. Good. I look forward to hearing this super clip of Marty. <laughs> to uh, just hang out, say hello, enjoy himself. And Marty Pereira is here again. And he came in specifically to tell the Power Twin something. And what, what, did, you, what did you have to tell him? And you better be careful what you tell him, too. So here he is, Marblemouth Marty. And wrestling fans, Marblemouth Marty. David, I seem to recall that when you came into the area, you announced that you were undefeated up in Calgary. I found a wrestling uh, magazine article past week from one of Bill Actors' magazines, and it mentions here the Four Seasons Arena in Great Falls, Montana. 
Well, a couple of wrestlers don't, I don't know, but then Gamma Singh and Bob Brown says he had defeated the Power Twins. Is this a misprint? I has to be a misprint. What do you have to say about this? It's obviously a misprint. Obviously, your, talent, your knowledge of wrestling is very limited. These guys have been around for years. We got in there with a couple of old pros. That also is a misprint, Marty. So get your facts straight when you start coming up here and talk to the Power Twins when you want to talk wrestling. You understand, Marty? I don't know. I don't know who you know Bob Brown is, but Bob Brown is, should have been retired like to 20 years ago. I don't know what the man is still doing in the ring, man. He looks terrible. He is terrible. It's obviously a misprint you have there, Marble Mouth. And don't come up with any more stupid questions again. I have a couple of surprises for you coming up in the next couple of weeks and a couple of challenges. I've been contacting a lot of wrestlers. What's your surprise? What are you taking? Some speech lessons? You can bring on whoever you want, Marty. We'll take them on. First, learn how to speak, though, when you come on the radio. Wait, wait, wait. I still feel that Johnny Rods is going to uh, win uh, that match against Mondo Queen. That's where you're wrong again, Radio Face. Using your limited wrestling knowledge again, Marty, to your disbenefit. All right, we have a, we'll take a, a short break here. Uh, what's a uh, hear about the orange and white taxi service? Listen up, you idiots out there. <laughs> For the daily commuter or the occasional traveler, Orange and White Taxi. What colors? Orange and White Taxi is the one for you at the LI Double R station in Huntington. That's in Huntington. Dial 271 3600 for fast prompt service to all boroughs and airports. You'll get where you're going in comfortable cars with courteous drivers. The number again, for you idiots out there, grab a pencil, is 271 3600. That is 271 3600. For Orange and White Taxi. Orange and White. At the LRRR station in Huntington. The service that never sleeps. And of course, they are official sponsors of the Pro Wrestling Spotlight. Back to the phones. Adam from Long Beach. How you doing, Adam? Okay, how are you? What's happening? Okay, I just want to agree with the power twins. I think that guy Marty is a real marvelhead. He sounds like a... He sounds, even on the radio, I guess he comes across as a, as a geek. Oh, yeah. And I heard him um, no, turn the ringing out thing. He sounded like a real jerk. Oh, he saw you ringing out. He said you sound like a jerk, Marty. Oh, yeah. Any, any comments? This guy Adam is, very, yeah, is obviously yeah, a very knowledgeable fan. Point. I'm just watching the oh, Ric Flair Steamboat match. Oh. The Flair Steamboat match is happening right now. Uh, also on the show, uh, Blue Blazer, as Marty would say from last week, the Blue Blazer. And uh, the Blue Blazer will be facing Greg the Hammer Valentine. Our guest in the studio, Marty Pereira. I'm not going to thank you because uh, I just don't want to. <laughs> Broadway. Oh, I'd just like to say hello Broadway, to, Blaze. I'd like to say hello to Joanne Suarez at the Central Islip Psychiatric Center, uh, Cindy Staley, and Robert Schaefer. All right, so we got. We our, hope they're all coming along very nicely. We, we hope they're all feeling good. Yeah. Until next week, when the Pro Wrestling Spotlight hopefully airs again. This is Mr. Wrestling, John Anthony. Take care, Marty. Yeah, at the end of the- I didn't even show when you thank everybody. You're like, but I'm not thanking Marty. You know, I, I almost had it in my mind that maybe I should reach out to him, but I'm like, no. no why draw him up yeah. that old embarrassment? Unless he wasn't embarrassed, but uh, I decided against that. I was to have him on? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it would take a full-on conversation before approaching that particular topic. <laughs> like, yeah. Probably has an yeah. AOL address anyway. Probably has got AOL. You know, those, you know those people with those AOL addresses. Technology oh, yeah. is not really, you know. All the old-time wrestlers, it's so funny. Um, but yeah, no, so we'd already covered, basically, you guys uh, were just going to ring them until you decided to stop do you know how many more yeah, weeks he stays on or do you think this is gonna no i don't know we'll find out we'll find out how long well, he yeah hangs in that's it that's the beauty of it when you when you listen to that old file and you discover things that's why i don't like to uh go uh, far in advance i like to be as surprised as the people listening to this show and you are oh yeah uh and the good news is, is that's not all of it the other clips we have include more marty they're just tied into other stuff that's happening so yeah that's just a taste here, of what you're going to be getting yeah hear the whole thing on patreon listen to it enjoy it get the yeah. whole full scope of that uh, poor bastard's uh, agony that day 
Well, poor dude, too. He's just going there because he loves wrestling. Wants to be around it. And yeah, next he, thing you know, he he's was, punching he was back. A super, he was a super fan. Yeah. Super fan. And I can't imagine he ever took advantage of any of you guys. So he's probably not a bad guy. guy. No, not. And I'm not saying he's a bad guy. He wasn't a bad guy. He was just, you know, he was just a little there. And and uh, he just wanted to be included, you know? Yeah. You just weren't having it at the time. You no live and you learn. That's right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. George Napolitano and uh, Mitch Seinfeld. Yes. Do you want to tell me about uh, your relationship with them before or after the clip? Uh, let's uh, hear the clip and then we'll uh, dive in. Okay. So this is a two-part super clip because George calls in. You talked to him for a minute, then he calls back because what's happening right here is you're doing live coverage the best that you can with the Ricky Steamboat Wrestle War um, Nashville pay per view that's yeah. going on right now. Yeah. Yeah. With the big, ang- with the big angle. Yeah. The huge angle, Flair's last chance. You have callers calling in to tell you what just happened on the show. This guy just won. This person just defended the title. Is this match going on yet? And so you're trying to give live coverage. And you even say at one point, hey, if you couldn't afford the pay-per-view, stay tuned in here. We're giving away the results live. <laughs> uh, and as soon as the Flair uh, match is over, you guys call George back. And so you guys talk to George again, and that's when he puts Mitch Seinfeld on. So. This week, we're going to give you the prices. We're going to charter a bus, and uh, the listeners of WNYG can come on out with uh, myself and maybe even the Power Twins. Marty, uh, uh, you'll either be loading the bus, uh, serving refreshments, or perhaps... Driving. Perhaps, no, no, no. We, no I wouldn't trust you. No, we don't have enough insurance to handle the, uh, the possible liabilities of that event, but... Uh, we might, we might, uh, we might keep you home. John, I think this is a great idea. Get all your listeners out there on the bus, both of them. <laughs> Ooh, that's a, that's a, that's a. Uh, John, that's I just want to mention if any of the fans want to send in any wrestling results in the tri-state area to me, they can send them to Marty PO Box One One Two. I'm not going to give you any plugs. You want to pay me for an advertisement of seventy-five bucks a pop? Now, if you want to give me seventy-five dollars, you can certainly plug your address if you like, Marty. Cough up the cash. Cough up the cash immediately. Cough up the cash. George Napolitano, wrestling reporter extraordinaire, is now on the phones, and we're going to speak to George at this very moment. George Napolitano, one of the most exciting wrestling reporters in the business. Uh You're now on live with the Pro Wrestling Spotlight. How are you doing, George? All right. How are you, John? I'm doing pretty good. We've been having an exciting show thus far, uh, speaking to many of the top names in the business, and uh, we wanted to get you on. I don't know if you're watching the NWA show or not at this point. Right now, we're it's, uh, the, right the main event is still happening, you understand? Yes, right. It is. It's Which, uh, about 10 minutes into the match. What's your prediction on it? I think Flair's going to win it back. Great. That's uh, that's the general consensus here at the studios. We uh, already had Captain Lou Albano on, and he had some very nice things to say about you. Uh, we just got off the phone with Johnny Rods, who was intimidated here by the Power Twins. The Power Twins. They're here in the studios right now. How you doing, George? All right. How are you, guys? All right, George. And, uh, Johnny Rod? Yeah, they kind of, um, just you know, the way it is. You know that old Spanish marble mouth? He can't talk anymore. He's no competition for us. In the ring or on the microphone. <laughs> so, uh, he tries. He's okay. So, so he's a good man. So I understand that you also went to, uh, to the, one of the NWA shows the last week, and how was that one? Okay, last week, let me think now, Philadelphia. Yes. I couldn't remember where I was. Philadelphia, yeah, it was really good. But the Iron Sheik tried to get the belt from Ric Flair. Mm-hmm. Tried to, he wanted to be the only man to hold both titles. Well, one of the person has held both the NWA and the WWF titles. That's right. You know who that is, John? No, I don't. Buddy Rogers. That's a ticket. The only other man to hold both titles. And the Iron Sheik was trying to make it. He was fighting Ste- Steamboat, you mean, last week? Yes, he okay. was. I'm sure that, that was a, no, that was a uh, no competition type of match. Not really. He, he gave uh, Steamboat some uh, some moments. You know, the, the Sheik is not as good, obviously not as good as he used to be. Mm-hmm. There's no question he's not as good as he used to be, but he still has a quite well, a few moves. Yeah, he's, he's still a world-class wrestler. He can still move around the ring. And right. He can surprise you. Mm-hmm. Well, George, as our listeners know out there, you edit many ma- uh, wrestling magazines. Tell us some of the magazines you're involved with at the time. Yeah, superstar Wrestler, Superstar Wrestler Reporter, which is more of a newspaper format. That's an excellent publication. I have a magazine. Thank you very much. Ringside Wrestling, 
wrestling scene, wrestling all stars. And then several uh, others, uh, Beauties in Wrestling and uh, Wrestling Scrapbook and some poster magazines and things like that. Yeah, we understand that you're uh, 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 very uh, very friendly with some of the top lady wrestlers in the business today. Uh, John, stop it. <laughs> Uh, to nothing to be ashamed of is a power to myself. Some of them are looking better than they used to. Uh huh, exactly. Okay. Some of them look like they don't look like quote wrestlers. I mean, they have some, they have a little more going for them. Right. And make sure to place your order now for the latest shipment of the WWF action figures. After this shipment is depleted, there might not be another for a long time. LNS are also taking advance orders for the hot new Nintendo handheld wrestling game, as well as orders for the hot WrestleMania Nintendo cartridge. Call LNS at 516-489-X-Men now. And now back to John Anthony and the Pro Wrestling Spotlight. We're back. We're on the phone with George Napolitano. George, can you hear us? Yes, I can, John. I understand there's some, there's some uh, I, I, excitement. I just try to talk to you at the same time. Huh? Rick, Rick Flair has beaten Ricky Steamboat. Okay, he beat him, and then, uh, well, as Jim Ross was in the ring congratulating Flair on winning the title for the sixth time, being his only second man, Lutez being again the first, and that, uh, Terry Funk came into the ring and challenged, well, actually congratulated Flair for winning the title. Just kept on interrupting him, and then he also says to him, "Since I'm the first to graduate, I always want to be the first to challenge you." Flair, and Flair, however, says that he didn't want to wrestle somebody who has been spending the last five years in Hollywood with Sylvester Stallone. That says, probably didn't go over well with Terry Funk. No, he says we have ten, top, you know, ten top contenders, and you're not one of the contenders. I mean, at some point, yes. And then, then Funk says, "Okay, let me." Uh, I was just kidding when I said I wanted to challenge you. Champion Ric Flair. Uh, tables and chairs are flying. Flair is out on his feet. Uh, so we do anticipate a, fl- uh, a feud happening. Terry Funk back in the NWA challenging the new champion, six time NWA world champion, just crowned 10 minutes ago, crowned yeah. with the belt. Oh, Mitch. Yeah. How you doing, Mitch? This is John Anthony with the Pro Wrestling Spotlight. Uh, we just wanted to uh, talk to you briefly. We know you have a couple of big shows coming up. And um, you're in there, I know, watching the WrestleMania, the, uh, not WrestleMania, but the Wrestle War 89 with the NWA. We have the Power Twins sitting here who wanted to say a couple words here. Mitch, I know it's tough to tell you away from the, the buffet over there. I'm glad you I, I can't the hear you guys. Hold on a second. I know it's tough tearing you away from the buffet over there, but I'm glad you can come on the phone and talk to us. Uh-huh. About the upcoming show, you know, we just got back from Canada, and we're looking for some, we've been uh, contacted by at least 10 of the big promoters around here, and we understand that you're one of the young promoters in the game, the up and coming, and you do want to set us up with a match with a couple of your boys. I'd like to know who they are and where they came from, and if they dare step in the ring with the Power Twins. Well, uh, as you know, you guys already signed for a couple of contracts against the Wild Samoans, often seek a three-time former world champions. Tough competition. And, um, yeah, they're going to have a tough time, those Samoans. And on the 20th of this month in Brooklyn, besides being in a tag team match, you guys are set for a battle royal. You know, I don't know how you guys feel about stepping in a battle royal. But as far as I'm concerned, if you two guys are left in the ring, what's going to happen? Well, you, the only thing you have to worry about is the guys that are stepping in the ring with us. I don't know who you have in mind, but it doesn't matter to us because we're going to go in there and we're going to come out together as winners. You got that, Mitch? I wish you all luck. If we end up together, you know, we're just going to have to go out and celebrate. All right, Mitch, listen, we appreciate your time. What we're going to do now is we're going to plug a couple of your upcoming shows, and we hope to get you on here at the Pro Wrestling Spotlight Live so we could uh, talk a little bit in more detail. I understand that you and George are both uh, watching that NWA show. We'll get you back to it. Uh, listen, thanks a lot for coming on, and uh, look forward to the Power Twins coming out there and destroying all your competition. All right, and May 20th, Brooklyn, New York, St. Thomas Aquinas Gym, Power Twins, Kamala, Jewel Strongbow, Bobby Jaggers, Cheetah Kid, Bowl Matches, Battle Royal, nine matches in all. All right, we'll give that information now. Thanks a lot, Mitch. Talk to you soon. All right, bye-bye. At the time, Mitch was the youngest promoter in pro wrestling. How old was he? Uh, I would have to say he had to be right around 21, 22 years old. Okay. And he was promoting. He was a young kid, and uh, he promoted for you know several years, stayed in the business for a lot of years, and then uh, uh, segued his career into um, going on the road at, say, BJ's Wholesale, Costco, 
with these uh, almost like these TV products. He's got this thing called Easy Pro, which is a chopper for food. So he sets huh. up for a week at a time at these at these locations, and he makes mint money, big big money. He was always a he was always an entrepreneur, always an entrepreneur, and uh, really cool guy. Um, known him for a lot of years, obviously, and met him through George, uh, and uh, and he was promoting that show, and that's the show that. Uh, I worked uh, as manager for Sonny against Kid Crush, uh, Taz, and uh, the twins are on there in that battle. Well, that's the show they were referring to. And George, what can I say? I don't even know. I, I, I can't figure out why George was not at that NWA show in Philadelphia because normally he'd be at every one of their big shows. So he was home in Brooklyn watching on his TV. Uh, yeah. But um, George and I just go back uh, to my teen teen days, man. Yeah, long, yeah, you've known George friend. forever, and then so yes. I imagine that's how you 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 knew Mitch through George, obviously. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Huh. Well, good news is for everyone who is watching on YouTube, I found Mitch Seinfeld pitching his Easy Chopper video that I will be <laughs> overlaying. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was quick. Yes. Right, I, and, and, right it's, it. and it starts with Mitch Seinfeld here with his Easy Pro Kitchen Chopper. So, um, yeah, and he's got an Easy Pro Slicer. I mean, this dude did not fall off. You know, he's there's no way that he's doing these. And No, he's on the road every week. But that's, that's pretty cool, though. I wonder, though, being so young, and you'd even brought it up when someone was talking about the Dean Wrestling. Sounds like he's going to be a big big time promoter at some point. And you're like, it takes money. And as you knew, once you got through IWAS, it takes a lot of money. Um, mm-hmm. And when you work with AAA, it takes more money than you think you should have to. <laughs> um, do you know? And I know from my conventions. I mean, my goodness. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you're no stranger to the idea that there's there's a lot more than just uh, know how and want to make this stuff work uh, or even get started. Did he come from money in a way? I believe that uh, he probably did. It was embedded. It, it was embedded in him. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but he was a he was a hustler, man. He was a hustler, and he did a lot of shows, and he brought good names in. And he found these little like St. Thomas Aquinas gym and these little Catholic schools. Uh, that he would do these shows at and these little, you know, armories or whatever. And he did that for, I don't know how many years specifically, but uh, he was promoting for a while. Do you remember the name of his promotion? I, I don't, I do not. I do not remember. The last time I saw Mitch was when I did uh, a Tommy Fierro uh, 80s wrestle con. Uh, and it was in Jersey and Mitch uh, found out that I was going to be there and showed up with his kids and, it was really good to see him after all those years. It was really good to see him. Wasn't that last year? No, it, the, 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 I didn't do gone. Tommy. I, it was either 2000, I think it was the first one that I did with Tommy, and that was in 2019. Yeah. That's a while That's ago. Cool. That's already five years. Yeah, but how cool that he saw your name was going to be there and goes, I got to go say Hi to John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we, you know, we weren't the best of friends, but we were certainly respectful of each other. He was at my conventions, and uh, he was always kind of like respectful. And I, yeah, I just thought I just knew that the guy was going to make it in whatever he decided to do. He was that type of guy. You knew that this guy's going to be successful at this young age, doing what he's doing, the entrepreneur that he was. And then lo and behold, you know, he lives in this big you know, beautiful home in Jersey and, and he, and he does very well for himself. And I think the kind of mentality that people like that have that other people don't think about isn't just the will to be successful, but the wherewithal to know uh, if something's not going to be, or when to jump ship or when to lean in, like when to set that focus, right? It's not just, I have a dream. I want to do it. And by any means necessary, it's okay. This isn't have longevity anymore. I need to switch it up or 
this is this is starting to work. I really need to lean in heavy. Like that mentality of yeah. knowing when to you push know when you know when something can catch fire, and you know when the ride is over. Yes, exactly. I've done it, I've done it many times in my life. You know when uh, when the music business was uh, was like I'm aging out. Uh, I don't have the passion. This ain't gonna work now. You, you, it's time to get out. Especially if you're an entrepreneur. If you're working for a company, it's different. But when you're out there on your own, like with wrestling, I knew that I had to get out and I knew when to get out. And uh, even when I got back in in 2019 to the wrestling business here, uh, after a year, I knew that this ain't going to be the way for me to make a living once yeah. again. So you pivot. Pivot. I'm just noticing too, as I'm trying to find out more and I'll do more once we're off, like I'm not going to do all my research here, but uh, when I'm looking up Mitch Seinfeld to find out about what the name of his promotion was, um, I come across a tweet from Gary Michael Capetta from just here where he's all like, thank you to Mitch Seinfeld who just sent me this title match and it's Bob Backlund versus uh, superstar Billy Graham. Uh, but so even just last year, he's reaching out to Gary Michael Capetta. Check out this match and that. Like, I don't yeah, know, it's cool. Um, but yeah, so that's neat. I was just I was wondering about that because you guys were talking about how he was young, and so I felt like there had mm-hmm. to be a. And we've covered um, George many times, and then yeah, you guys opened up with yelling at Marty. <laughs> Off up the twenty five off right now. <laughs> if you want to pitch your PO box. <laughs> yeah, what balls, right? Well, because remember his whole thing, because I noticed that by this week, you guys were not giving him the time, but the first time he's on, it's to give results. He wanted yeah. a set on your show where he would just give results of shows. So he's trying to yeah. pitch to people, if you have results, send them to me so yeah, I can yeah, come I, on air. Yeah. Right? Yeah, because that was kind of what he envisioned his role as, is to be like this weekly results from around yes. the country. I, you know, and I cut that, I nipped that in the bud on air live. <laughs> Which is also what funny because I asked you the other day when you're like, he, he said that he pays for his time. And I was like, did you actually charge him for time? And you're like, no, I never would have. And then right here, you're like, give me $35 right now or you're out of here. I guess because it was so like, uh, so annoyed and like, uh, we don't want it to be in there. And then he does that. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, whatever, you know. Made good radio back then, and it's certainly fun listening to it again. <laughs> it's cool. It's fine. Uh, let's see. And then Sonny Blaze is in the – is in the, the he's here. And you you mentioned him a couple times, Sonny's here, but then you kind of move straight over. This is when you actually say, like, Sonny, you're being kind of quiet. What's going on over here? And, you know, he gives yeah. you the reason why he's just sitting there and – there's a lot happening in there. Uh, and then it's also followed up because uh, it happened right after that. Uh, a caller calls in again, mentioning the Dean of wrestling, which I really enjoyed. So we'll play that right here. Okay. Pro wrestling spotlight alpha mass Pequa. Hello. You're on air. Yeah. I want to speak to the power twins. You got it. Yeah, I heard a lot about the Power Twins. I heard they're a combined weight of 600 pounds. Is that true? Combined weight of about 620. Am I mistaken or what? Well, that's uh, after breakfast, John. Okay. Uh, what other questions do you have, you geek? Sounds like a pencil. Well, uh, phone my wife and I were recently on a vacation up in Canada, and we got a chance to see the Power Twins wrestle, and those guys are tremendous. Yes, yeah, so you did enjoy them then. Oh, yeah, they were unbelievable. i never seen anything like it. But I noticed one thing that they were uh, they had kind of a funny haircut, like they had like a hole in the middle. <laughs> well, if you come down to the stage, you're going to have a hole in the middle too there, pencil neck. Any other questions? Hey, listen, if you got any more stupid questions, we don't need to speak to you anymore. Keep it to yourself. Any other questions? I guess that's about it. Thank you very much for the call. And like I said, if you do want to be intimidated, just call 661-1440. Hey, listen. You know something? These these uh, calls were going good for a while, and you know, you get, you, you get one geek thrown in, it messes up the whole show. 
It looks like it kind of irritated you a little bit. Yeah, it is. I'm pretty excited about that. Marty better not say anything stupid. I might slap him. I know. He looks yeah. a little... He looks a little... Uh, he's, he's turning white right, as you speak. That hole in the middle of the head is because they put him in the electric chair and it didn't work. Well, Marty, you better keep your comments to yourself. I'm coming out in that extra studio and I'm going to kind of get you myself. They're going to hear a lot of slapping and banging going on in that studio. That hole you're talking about is too many turns underneath the sheets. <laughs> Also, in the studio, we do have uh, Broadway. You've been pretty silent tonight. I guess uh, anything to say at all today? I'm silent sitting between the power twins. I'm not saying anything to these guys. I don't. I guess he didn't take time out this week and did his homework and asked another question. So I guess you didn't practice up another question, did you, Dan? Actually, I did. I wanted to ask you guys about a, a little bit about yourself prior to entering wrestling. I understand that you hold uh, many national discus throwing records, shot put records, uh, all sort of collegiate and uh, amateur wrestling records. So I was wrong. I guess you did practice up this week and did your homework. You asked a very good question this week, and my brother will be happy to take care of that question. Tell us about that. Good question, Al. Uh, before I entered the professional wrestling ring, I was a professional football player for about three years. I was with the team such as the Dolphins, the Eagles, and I did play in Canada for a short time. That's where some of the Canadian promoters have seen me in the <laughs> action. So that's why I spent a lot of time in Canada. As my brother, he was a collegiate shot put though, as I'll tell you himself. That's right. We also competed in many powerlifting competitions. Natural, of course, you know. Uh, these bodies are drug-free. We don't need any of that stuff. Kids hear that out there? No drugs. No drugs. Out there in Radio Land. And we've won many of these competitions. And uh, when we got into the wrestling game, we figured this is just going to be another easy avenue for us to excel in. Isn't that right? Yeah, so money-making avenue for us to excel in. So I want to say uh, thanks to Broadway Sunny Blaze for practicing up and doing his homework this week to ask us that great question. And if, uh, if you're good this week, you'll, you'll work on another question for next week, all right? Good job. Maybe we'll let you back on the radio. Tell me the truth, David. You idolize me, don't you? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have a list of uh, characters here at the studio. Uh, we're going to take another call from West Islip. Who is this? <coughs> Hello, you're on the air. Oh, yeah, how you doing there? How you I doing? I want to stick to my friend Joey from Mass Allen there from Babylon. going to put the figure four on Bolte, as he said. I want to congratulate that uh, Ric Flair. Congratulations to Ric Flair, but yeah. also you said that a friend of yours is going to put the figure four on the Power Twins? Yeah, you know, What's your friend, a dog? What's he got, four legs? <laughs> How's he going to put a figure four lock on the ball us, you moron? Stop asking these stupid questions. You're an idiot. Hang up on him, John. Six, six. You other listeners, if you have any other stupid questions, keep them to yourself. If you have any intelligent questions, really, if you have any intelligent calls. questions, give us a call. The Power Twins are getting a little bit upset here. John, now I, I don't want to. I don't want to say they're going to be getting pushed over the edge, but Marty is starting to back up a little bit because they need to make an example out of someone, and it might just be you, Marty. John, I thought we were raising the, the intelligence levels of the audience, but I guess not. I guess the old saying goes through like, um, "What has twelve teeth and IQ of 14? The first four rows of a wrestling audience, and these. Calls today are proving that, John. I wish they'd be a little smart and just call and ask intelligent questions instead of stupid ones. Obviously, all our intelligent listeners have to be asleep by 7 o'clock. All their parents are asking these stupid questions. Now, keep them to yourselves and wake your kids up. They have the ones with the smart questions. Well, you heard that out there, everybody. If you want uh, to call them with some intelligent questions for the power tunes, they'll be more than happy to take your questions. But if you have any kind of idiotic comments to make, you imagine, don't bother calling John, up right you now. That guy's going to put two figure four locks on at the same time. It must be his girlfriend, a dog or something like that. How's the guy going to put figure four locks on us at the same time? Two men our size to think of that is incredible. Well, speaking of... Ah, where do you go from there? <clears throat> well, that dude did mention like Joey Massaro or Joey Massara, I guess. So that was uh, Joey's last name. Yeah. So someone, a lot of people knew Joey and called in because of that. Like we heard Mario earlier. Yeah. Right. No, no we didn't hear right? Mario. No. No. Oh, no, I didn't play Mario. No. Where is it? Let me look. I'm going to look to see where yeah, I put it. Because it's either after the Sheik the, and Rotundo. That's the best one. That's the best one anyway. Because I, I, I didn't know if it was his mother or his father. <laughs> so especially, the way, especially the way that person ended the call. Yes. Yeah, I can't believe we almost missed the Mario clip. This was one you and I have been talking about, emailing about. We got to play it. So here it is before we miss another one. Okay. I just wanted to say, you know, you've been talking about that guy, Marty? Yeah. What's your opinion? Well, the guy should be kicked out of the country. 
<laughs> well, you know, you're not going to get anyone. Hey, John, you're obviously another knowledgeable, another knowledge, fan. knowledgeable wrestling fan. Yeah, the that they, they should really uh, teach him a lesson and uh, beat him up. Well, that's why if you notice in Amityville, Marty didn't even announce that match. He was afraid to step into the ring in front of a crowd uh, with the Power Twins, afraid of being humiliated. He should have been because the Power Twins would have turned him into a pretzel. Ken, you're right, and I think we're going to take him out of the park a later and show him what a real pretzel looks like. And, of course, Marty did not bring his bodyguards here, so uh, he has to watch his back when he leaves the building tonight. Thank you very much for your call. Now it's the number one. You got it. Thank you very much. Hey, John, I just want to say I want to keep all those knowledgeable Long Island fans keep calling because that guy obviously knows what he's talking about. Right, Larry? Yes, I agree with that. John, right, I just wanted to ask you if the last call Adam had his mother's permission to make that phone call. Did he have his mother's permission to make the call? You've seen the ads on TV. Get miles from. Well, this is not this is not a pay service. This is a free service, Marty. Uh, the wrestling fans out on Long Island have the right and the privilege to call in and express their views for free. Now we understand that you have to get permission to make phone calls outside the area which you live in. That doesn't mean that the knowledgeable wrestling fans also have to do the same thing. I also think that someone has to dial a phone from too, John. That could be true. Okay, uh, we have a, another caller at 661-1440. I believe we're going to be speaking to Mario. Mario? Yeah, hello, how are you? How are you, sir? I'm fine. I know, you're the dean? Excuse me? You're the dean. Joey called up before and he told me, tell you that he knows all about wrestling. He's going to call you back, all right? Sure. We listen to you know, we listen to it. Well, I'm glad you listen to the program, man. Yeah, all the time, we love it. <laughs> the Power Twins want to say something here to you. Get huh? back to the kitchen, man. Start tossing those pizzas. Get off the phone. Thank you, Doc. Okay, take care now. Thank you. <laughs> well, if anyone could uh, say thank you to an insult, uh, he must be a friend of Marty Pereira's. <laughs> thank you, doll. Son of his mother, father, grandmother, grandfather. But that was Uncle definitely maybe. a connection. Yeah, definitely a connection to Joey. A family He's going to call you back, all right? <laughs> okay, we've been listening. Thank you, doll. <laughs> so good. Ian could not miss another opportunity to take another dig at Marty. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. He said thanks to for an insult, so he must be a friend of yours. <laughs> oh, man. The red letter I'm day. I'm telling you. <laughs> I couldn't believe, and I loved it because Joey's been one of my favorite callers ever since I discovered him. The whole, everyone rallied. All your callers rallied against Marty and for Joey. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to call and say something about Marty. Oh, yeah, what's your thoughts on him? They got to kick him out of the country. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, that was, I think, Ken from Abneyville. Ken Pulvadetti, I think his name was. and I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so he was a regular uh, caller. The top half of his conversation there was actually just regular, talking about the NWA thing. I think he had given you yeah. a result and then said, also, I want to yeah. shit on Marty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, yeah, and like you said, we might have another clue for Joey. We got maybe a last name. I'm going to re-listen to that slowly. I'm going to try and oomph the audio a little bit, see if I can't figure out that name and start looking into it. Yeah, Masaro or Masara. Yeah. Masaro is famous because of Ashley, right? Yeah, right? But I don't know if she was from Babylon. She's from Long know. Island, but, you know, there's a lot of Italians oh, really? up there on Long Island. Yeah, well, Ashley's from Long Island. Yeah, she's a Long Island girl. Oh, was. I did not know that. All right. Well, then maybe. Maybe that's our... <laughs> There's a bloodline. <clears throat> yeah. Well, John, I only have one more clip left, and it's because the Sheik and Mike Rotundo yeah. were both on here. I think this is this isn't Rotundo's first time on. You had him once before. I think it was on um, the first episode, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and this was kind of a follow up to that. But this is the first time Sheik was on. And I sweeten the audio a little bit because in the original recording, the one you released for the Patreons, it's sounding a little weathered. So mm -hmm. I boosted some of it and put some mastering filters on there to, to try and make it easier to hear. So I wanted to play it so the people who, who only heard the other one at least get a little sweetened version of it. Uh, and in the middle of it, 
because this all happened back to back. Sheik interview, a phone call, yeah. Rotundo. Rapid uh, fire. So it's only a few minutes. Yeah. Intelligent men. We understand that we had a, a we did an interview with the Iron Sh- the NWA, and since we are doing a, a show geared to the big pay per view event, we spoke to the Iron Sheik not too long ago, and uh, these are some of the intelligent comments that he had. One of the best men in wrestling. Intelligent American people know New York, especially the big rider George Napolaro. He know about the Sheik background. I will come from one country, Tehran, Iran, to your country, New York, wrestling country, and um, intelligent, your country people, New York people, they know about the Aaron Sheik, WWF champion, singing, and also with Nikola Volkov, tag team, the whole highway champion. Now I've been to the NWA for one reason. Intelligent wrestling fans in New York know about Aaron Sheik. I've been, I'm coming to the NWA, NWA for one reason. For Ricky Simbo and uh, Lex Lux Luger, the whole heavyweight championship belt. And uh, this last couple of, last couple of weeks, I started in, w- in NWA. A lot of uh, good wrestler, a lot of good competitor. I'm on, oh, I'm over for one reason to show the Aaron Sheik always was best and still. And you want the world title from Ricky Simbo? Exactly. One thing I've noticed, I've seen you wrestle the last few weeks. You've been tearing the competition up. There's been virtually no competition for you. I've seen you, I've seen you virtually destroy opponents in the ring. You're absolutely right, John. Uh, I don't have any good appo- appointment now. So you can't handle any more than four or five minutes in the national TBS uh, uh, broadcast system. Nobody can handle me. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, training hard and I'm ready for uh, only one thing like I tell you. Ricky Simbo will have it, champion belt and looks look at That's because uh, I'm waiting another couple of weeks, couple of months, whatever my tour come. For one reason, I'm in the NWA. Well, the way you've been wrestling recently, uh, I'm sure that title cut shot's going to come sooner than you think. Iron right, Sheik, thank you very much. Best of luck. Thank you, John. Back with the Pro Wrestling Spotlight. We'll take another call. 661-1440. Frank from Brooklyn. You're on the air. Yeah, the two guys that are there. Were they the guys on that Fox TV show? Do you ever have a Fox? Yes, it was. Oh, those two guys are the biggest dicks. 661-1440 is the number. John, obviously you don't screen these calls for intelligent questions because these guys have got to be the biggest morons I've ever heard in my life. I know there isn't much intelligent life in Brooklyn, but there must be somebody with an intelligent question. Yeah, yo, Guido, come on. Smart up. Got, somebody, with an intelli- somebody with a little intelligence, please call the station. We're tired of these morons. Yeah, well, that's uh, Frank from Brooklyn giving his comments about the Power Twins. And also right now at the NWA show, uh, I understand the World Tag Team match is uh, going to be taking place, if it's not taking place right now. We spoke to Mike Rotundo, who is co-owner of the World Tag Team title, uh, sanctioned by the NWA, and he spoke about this feud that he has with the Road Warriors. I said it was luck to him initially. He got a little angry. Let's hear what Mike had to say. Uh, some people might think it was luck, but I think it was a skill of the varsity club. We were well prepared for the match in New Orleans, and we knew what the Road Warriors had to offer. But the varsity club, once again, has come out victorious. And Dr. Death and myself, Mike Rotundo, have really worked hard for these belts, and I don't think anybody can take them away from us. It'll be a while. We also fought one of the most respected tag teams in the world in defeating them and now having the straps around your, your waist. Must be a good feeling. You know, there's no doubt that the Road Warriors are a prestigious tag team. They've been all over the world. They're big in Japan. They're big in the United States. And uh, it was a definite plus for the varsity club. But now we're on the right direction, and uh, we're going to have the belts, like I said, for a long time. Not to bring a, bring a downer over here, but uh, you just recently lost the TV title. Uh, any, what's your plans on trying to retain that, get it back? Well, I not only lost the TV title, I lost $10,000 of my own money, which I'm not real happy about. To me, the match had been signed too quickly, and I wasn't prepared for it. So some people might say that's an excuse, but I'll tell you what. If I get my chance at Sting, he's going to pay for what he did. First of all, that's my money, and that title meant a lot to me because I've been claimed as the greatest NWA champion, television champion of all times, and that claim came by the Varsity Club. So that, to me, is more prestigious than having the fans or anyone else claim it. Members of my varsity club claim me that champion, and I'll get that belt back from Sting if I get a chance. Okay, but, it's best to put it up. Okay, but losing that 10000 and and the belt, uh, can you put some of the blame on 
Kevin Sullivan, the captain? Well, I don't think so. I mean, Kevin's done nothing but help me the whole way along, so we'll just uh, bide our time, and, and somewhere down the road, I'll get a chance at that title, and Sting's going to pay. All right, best of luck to you. We'll be back with the conclusion of the Pro Wrestling Spotlight for this week, right after this. Hi, this is Rick Steamboat, the NWA Heavyweight Champion. You're listening to the Pro Wrestling Spotlight, WNYG 1440. Good way to end it. Yep, yep. And you came back and you thanked everyone except for Marty. That was right. Specifically. But I will thank you here publicly today. Marty, thank you for the entertainment you provided all those years ago. You know, looking back on it, it's really funny in hindsight. It's also a little bit of a bummer. But (laughs) Um, yeah, I think it was... He was a big part of that show, whether whether he was. you were intending him to be or not. He was kind of the focus of the show, if you really dive deep into it. He was in almost every segment, every call. Marty, yeah, thank you. Yeah. And so uh, does the Power Twins and everyone else associated with that show that day. We just thank you sincerely. Yeah, Sonny oh, had nothing but nice things to say about him. Yeah, well, Sonny says nice things about everybody. That guy doesn't That's have true. a that doesn't he doesn't have a uh, a bone in his body which is going to insult anyone. I've never heard him insult anyone. That's true, and we've tried. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he's the only yeah. person I know that will call somebody Mister. Every person. Yeah, mm. Mister Backlund, Mister San Martino, Mister Flair. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Mr. Marsh. No. Can't wait He's to bring him way. back. Oh, it's going to be great. I'm excited to meet him in person. I'm stoked. Oh, uh, I before we wrap it up, do you have any chic or microtundo stories to throw out there? Not really. Because these, these were just I, backstage I had, interviews. You were just at a show, yeah? Yeah, I had lunch with Mike. Uh, and Ted DiBiase and Sunny uh, Beach uh, on Long Island couple years ago when my book came out we were all at uh, uh, Wrestling yeah. Universe down on Long Island and they were there and Sonny took us all out to uh, uh, to Rob Keys in East Northport for a wonderful Italian feast yeah did they remember yeah, think, you? Uh, no no well no, no not at all actually <laughs> I didn't have much interaction with uh, Mike or uh, DiBiase uh, except for, you know, my nephew, he's a DiBiase. Yeah. yeah. I had a nice well, picture of them together, which was kind of cool, the DiBiases. That's cool. That's fun. But yeah, um, those guys, no, I wasn't, uh, you know, because of who they were associated with. Um, and the Sheik I never kind of ran into. I would have loved to have that one time. Like yeah, that was that was kind of it. And I did run into him at uh, WrestleCon uh, in Manhattan in 2019. He was there, and I said hello to him. He didn't know who I was. Cheeky baby. I I just think it's tough, too, because, you know, some of these dudes remember everything. You know what I mean? Like the Jim Cornettes remember guys who were only on one or two shows. You know what I mean? Yeah, and some of these guys can't remember for the life of them where they were when they won the world title. You know what I mean? Hey, Ricky, like Ricky Steamboat didn't remember me when I saw him at Mitch uh, at uh, Tommy Fierro's '80s WrestleCon. He didn't know who really? I was. He done a lot with your show. He was on a he good number of times. conventions. My very first uh, autograph signing at WNYG. We made history with that shoot interview. Um, yeah, uh, but he said something which kind of you know took me aback a little bit when I said, "Hey, you doing?" I was saying, you know, I was trying to. He goes, "Brother," he goes, "I had so many so many hits to the head. I don't even remember what I did yesterday. Sometimes, yeah." And so I was like, I just let it go. And meanwhile, at the next table, yeah. there's Jake Snake, and you know, seeing him and say hello to him for the first time in years. He goes, "I thought you were dead." 
So there you go. Some people can could remember everything, even though they've ingested, you know, pounds of cocaine and crack and meth and everything else. And then the other guy, who's one of the most sweetest individuals you ever want to meet, doesn't remember anything about you. In fairness, Jake probably has good reasons to hope that you were dead. <laughs> Because you were exposed to a lot of things that he's aware of. <laughs> Lots of things. That... <laughs> Read I, the did book. See the, I did see the snake once. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. There's certain <laughs> events in your life that you remember not fondly <laughs> and go, I hope that guy's dead because well, he's back with Cheryl <laughs> now. And <anyway. laughs> yeah. That was the most she also probably hopes. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, that tell was the also truth, something brother. That, uh, <laughs> Fuck you both. That hung up on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I could understand why the trauma would make Jake remember you, and and on the flip side, you were just part of the business for Ricky. In a positive way, you were just part of the business. You were just an interview. You were a guy you saw, and he probably didn't think much about you after he was done talking to you because that was that thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, even working with some of the wrestlers I've worked with, and you realize that, like, they've told this thing to me a couple times, and, oh, they forgot this thing I told them yesterday. Like, sometimes you can really gather that, like, hey, their their memory – is spotty and then at the same time you ask them about a specific thing and they just go right back there and right it's, yeah it's really and interesting that can be thing. the case with ricky I, I think you made a good point there because you know look at this guy's career and his life and how many people he interacted with and how many promoters he interacted with and all the people that he's met so yeah i can understand that for sure so uh, i did see him one other time at another small little wrestling gathering and i met his wife and uh, we exchanged phone numbers and and uh, got a picture with him. But, uh, yeah, he was – I have such fond memories of that guy, man. What a, what a gentleman. He's so cool. And I've only seen positive things about him. And But I've also – I also have seen – I forget who it was, but there was somebody who was filming themselves at a convention who knew Ricky, and he did not remember them. And they were a little like – are you sure? Like they knew yeah. him, knew him. But that's uh, how I. That's how I did. I was like, are you? Sh-? You know, I, that was because I was so like, wow. I mean, that's kind of because he was on the show several times, and and the things I did with him back in eighty nine and ninety, and it was just, uh, it was just interesting, you know. But but not everyone's going to remember you, man. And I think it's okay. I'm always surprised when people do remember me. There's people that I meet or I see again, or I mean, especially people I went to like high school with and I just go like, Oh, I'm sure you don't remember me. And then there's kind of like, Oh, how could I forget you? And you're like, Oh, because we weren't that close. That's how you could. And then at the same time, I've run into a few people where it's like, Oh, there's of course they remember me. And you just list off a dozen things and they just keep looking at you like, I don't, no, I'm yeah. just kind of like, and these are people who didn't have concussions for a career path. Right. So you just, well, there's so many people I don't remember. I mean, cause I would, uh, these wrestling fan conventions that I was going to and people would be like, Hey, remember da, da, da. And I, and that's a lot of them. I just don't have a clue, you know, just don't, don't remember yeah. at all. So it happens. So that's just part of how the brain works, Marsh. It is. But that, I think this is a good one. This was, it is. And that's why I like going back because especially this, this second run, as it were, I think you're remembering even more because a lot of this stuff takes a while to shake loose, you know, or you dig up these old pictures and suddenly it's, oh, this is that person, that person. And yeah, I love it. Yeah. So it's a particularly fun episode. It was, it was. And uh, it was like, it was the early days. It was the fun times. If you really take a look at it, it was the infancy uh, before everything turned uh, within a year. And uh, yeah. I got more jaded and got more inside and the shit started to hit the fan. And so, you know, so these were like, that's what I love about these early shows is the innocence of them and trying to navigate uh, into the business in whatever way I could, 
and then you meet the power twins along the way and Sonny blaze and marty and and you start getting you know guests who are you know a listers yeah so it was it had a little bit of everything these early shows Oh, and I didn't even point it out, but I realized I even wrote it down here was uh, when Sonny asked the twins the question. Sonny Blaze has a question for you. What's up, Sonny? What do you want? You, I thought Sonny would do his homework. And then he asked and they go, thank you, Al. <laughs> I, like, I did catch that. I did catch that. Yeah. And I was like, Woo, there we go. All right, Marsh, a good episode in the books. And uh, uh, we will be back uh, with another one next week. And so yep. I'll listen to that and see what kind of uh, gems that we could uh, we could highlight. It's going to be fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I still strongly encourage anybody to jump on the Patreon, which has new adjusted tiers. So it's a little bit uh, more affordable for some. And it's impossible to play the whole episode here and have us have anything to talk about. So all I'm trying to do is grab some of my personal favorite moments. But as we've learned yeah. from some of the Patreons that we talked to, Sometimes their favorite moments are not the same as ours. So oh, I, I encourage people yeah. to go through and find their own gems. Yeah. And when we have our next Zoom get together um, sometime probably later this month uh, before we go on a little a week or so uh, sabbatical, um, we will uh, try to get another Zoom call in there. And so, yeah, we invite you all to come on the Zoom. If you're a patron, you, you're invited on these Zoom Absolutely. Things. And uh, Rich Williams, of course, is there all the time, and Jared, and and uh, and our friend Anthony, uh, Anthony is there. So uh, yeah, it's fun. It's fun to just kind of because I love hearing what everybody thinks about this. And you know, if you're listening, you know, give it a review on Apple. You know, give it a nice review. That helps us. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, that's yeah. about wrapping up, Marsh. What's going on in your life? Anything else you want to highlight or discuss? Or you just want to, you know, talk baseball? Isotopes, man. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to get some baseball talk done today. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I think that, I mean, I just did another back and forth. There's a, it looks like I'm going to be helping out a, a guy I'm a big fan of here uh, with some merch. So I'm excited to do stuff like that. Cool. So anytime anybody needs anything from me, yeah, I'm at Ref Marsh on X marsh ref on instagram and i get those alerts on those so hit me up and uh yeah i'm happy to work with apparently anybody almost <laughs> hey what are you talking about hey <laughs> you're like hey have you heard of this guy no it's like well you're working with him now all right cool i'll google him <laughs> hey listen you're doing a great job and if you want any quality work done marsh is so talented in so many different areas so reach out to him at ref marsh and uh you will not be disappointed. Thank All right, my friend, it's good to see you again. Let me wrap it up and uh, we'll close it out for another week here at the Pro Wrestling Spotlight. Uh, one last reminder about Patreon, uh, patreon.com forward slash John Arezzi. Check it out. Check out the tiers. Check out the content. Uh, and I know you will not be disappointed. So do that for us. Uh, we have a YouTube channel, which is uh, doing really well. So go to youtube.com forward slash pro wrestling spotlight. Uh, see all the great content that's on there and subscribe to the channel and subscribe to this podcast. Uh, so you'll get notified when new episodes uh, come out each and every week. Uh, our schedule is typically on a uh, Thursday that we release these new episodes to the general public. So check us out there. If you want to follow me on any of the social media platforms, uh, just go uh, and look for me at John Arezzi. And uh, I'm also uh, uh, the co-host of the Terry Collins show. Uh, so uh, follow Terry at, uh, at Terry Collins underscore 10. Our new episode is with Carlos Mendoza, the current manager of the New York Mets. That was a real good one. And I do another show with a uh, former GM of the Toronto Blue Jays, uh, JP Ricciardi. And uh, follow us there as well. Uh, so everything else uh, is great. I'm happy to be back. And we look forward to talk more wrestling with you and more history next week right here on Pro Wrestling Spotlight Rewind. Until then, this is John Arezzi. Have a great week, everyone. Well, fans, that's all the time we have this week. I'm John Arezzi. See you next time, everybody. <laughs>